had expectations for this year. For this house. I'm not going to let this house revert back to old patterns. How it used to be. I don't know if you noticed this. I'm trying to get out of the way. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, probably, I don't know if they know that yet, but I, it, I am doing more things. I mean, some of the stuff that, you know, like on Wednesdays, I'm like, man, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to do some things. We're trying to get the planning committee. we got some things because there are some places we need to go. I'm not, I'm not leaving you. Okay, don't, so don't get sentimental. I'll be here. But some, some people need to come up, and I need to decline in my role. And we got to make up our mind that the trajectory and the landscape of this church will not look like it did in 2023 and be comfortable with it. And tell ourselves, like, what's that word that you saw? <laughs> you got to quiet your soul. Buff your body and say, okay, God, there's something on the horizon that's a little bit uncomfortable for me right now. It may be a person who's taking the lead that I really don't like, but I'm going to be comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, See, you got to tell yourself, the new thing that God is bringing to me, I would not have old expectations. Mm -hmm. It won't look, you gotta, sometimes you got to prophesy out of yourself. Tell your sometimes you got to prophesy out of yourself. Sometimes you got to prophesy out of yourself. God wants to do a new thing. And it's not like it used to be. So you got to, in order to get new things, you have to be comfortable with letting go of old ones. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you got to be comfortable. Yeah. Let it go of the old one. See, something Oswald Chambers said is so powerful. He said, it is no, it's no use to long for the days of old. Stand square where you are and make the present better than any past has been. Based all on your relationship to God and go forward. And presently you will find what is emerging on the horizon, that's my interpretation, what is emerging is infinitely better than the past ever was. Right. Yes. What God has pre-appointed pre from the foundations of the world, if we change and recalibrate our thinking processes and get detached from all of the past and all of the misalignment, uh, Misinformation we got and the things that are going on in our head and the misinterpretations of where we are right now and the misappropriation of the resources and all that other stuff we're missing. You know, if you make up your mind and say, God, okay, today is a new day because we can't just sing it like we did. Today is a new day. I'm making my mind. My slate is clean. And what you have for my future is no longer a negotiable thing for me. Because it ain't going to help y'all out. Serving God is not a democracy. It's not one of the seeds. The garantocracy, meritocracy, none of the seeds. Amen. It is a theocracy. Yes, sir. The rule of one, that's what it means. The rule of one. It's just about his rule. Tell your name, it's about his rule. Oh, yeah, I got 15 minutes. Let me get this to you. I know y'all ready to go. No. But I got two pages I'm going to stop. But this is going to bring me right where I need to go. Tell your name, this is going to bring us right where we need to finish it. See, because some of y'all got to understand, you have to choose to believe what you always refuse to believe. Yeah, that's, yeah. you got to choose to. You got to say, I always believe it this way. I, when I get around folks, they tell me, well, this, you know what, Father, I always believe. Oh, Lord! In my head, is a warning! Because it's telling me I'm not open for any new thing. You just say, you know what? I may have thought it this way, but I'm, I want your opinion. Yeah. You know, sometimes you kind of, people, you have to choose to believe what you always believe. And, it, and it's not by happen chance. It's your own volition. So you can reject it. You can wrestle with the word. You can wrestle with the past, you can wrestle with the moment, you can wrestle and not move forward to the things of the Spirit. You get what I'm saying? Because you settled in your mind. <coughs> Tell your neighbor, it's time to be unsettled. It's time to be unsettled. In your mind. In your I'm here to tell you, once you shift your thinking, you elevate the quality of your life. Once you shift your thinking. That's why repentance is so important. If, I re if you get shifted in your thinking, I don't care if on the, on the, script, on the spiritual level, or it could be uh, financially, it could be emotionally, mental, 
mentally, all that other stuff. Once you shift your thinking, things begin to happen. Now let's go to the next point. Sanctify yourselves. Oh, I wanted to get here before I close. Because we got, you know, we're in an age right now, a postmodern age, a humanistic age. I don't know if y'all know that. We're in an age where there's no absolutes. It's just like a variables. You know, we don't know, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, we got now pretty soon we're gonna have on the door, you know, back in the day when we was raised, you know, you knew a men's and a women's and all that. Mm -hmm. Am I right, y'all? Mm -hmm. You have a men door and a women door. Now they're trying to put uh, a unisex on doors. Yep. Is it oh, is it really like that? Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. See, I ain't seen that. See, thank God. Is it the schools? See, see. Wow. Yeah. So you up the door, you like. Right. Yeah. Any, many, mighty, more. <laughs> well, you got to flip a coin to figure out which one is going on. I don't know. It's just a lot of things out there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not homophobic. I'm definitive. Yes. You know, because I, I have relatives. I love them dearly. And I'm not going to impose my thoughts on them. Now, if they come up to me and ask me about stuff, then that's no door for me. But I'm not just going to like, bam, kick the door open and go in. Because that's blood. I love them. But I do have convictions. As all of us do. So my message ain't about that. My message is about where it says, sanctify yourselves when? Today. Today. For what? Tomorrow. Sanctify yourselves what? Sanctify yourselves. What translation said? Today. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I like that for the day. Mm -hmm. For the day, tomorrow. Yeah. There's no tomorrow without today. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no next without now. Mm -hmm. So what do I do now to get to my next? Sanctify. Yeah. Word that most of us don't want to talk about. We know we got some of us probably raised in sanctification churches, holiness churches, and, and you know, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, I'm a sanctifier. I'm a sanctifier. I'm a sanctifier. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm sanctified. I'm a sanctified preacher. I believe in sanctification. That's the word I'm going to use. I believe in sanctification. I believe God is into sanctification. I believe, you, you get what I'm saying? We have a history of sanctification. I, I believe that. But um, I want to talk about how do we sanctify ourselves today? You know, because it's about us. And he said, I like it because it says, sanctify yourself. Mm -hmm. Yourself. Amen. Not the person sitting next to you. Amen. Not the person you ain't seen in church. Amen. Sanctify yourself. That means you got to hold yourself in, under a spotlight. You got to hold yourself. What? Accountable. Accountable. Some of y'all gave it up. Well, like right that. You got to hold yourself accountable. So when the word is being released, what you do? You hold yourself accountable, right? That's what Paul told Timothy. All of Paul's letters were telling Timothy, hold yourself accountable. Yes. Don't let them despise you because yes. of your youth. Yes. He said, if he told him in uh, 1 Timothy uh, 4 and 16, he said, meditate upon these yes. things. Give yourself wholly a sanctification, right? That thy profiting may appear unto all. He said, hold yourself accountable to the yes, stuff you is. know. I told yes, you, Timothy. Yes. You sat at my feet. Yes. I'm your rabbi. You said underneath my word. Now, hold yourself accountable. So you got to sanctify yourself. Tell your neighbor, you got to sanctify yourself. Yeah, that means you got to hold yourself accountable. So, my intent on sanctification and on what the word sanctify means on next Sunday, because I, I, it's going to be so practical that you leave here this morning with a new pair of shoes. I want to put some new pair of shoes on you. So you can walk out the promise. Sanctification would give you a new pair of shoes so you can walk out the promise. I'm here to tell you. I, 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 I don't even know if I want to give it to you today. But let me just give you the definition. Then I, I give you the instruction on Sunday. Amen. I'm going to help you sanctify or sanctify yourself. See, because most of us are doing the touch not, taste not, handle not gig. You know what I'm saying? We, like, we were real full of fear. You know, we sit around here like, God got his eye on me. He's the man upstairs with a boat in his hand. When you get out of the line, he's going to zap you. And you, we were raised in those churches that embraced fear on us. Fear and torment. Turn a bird. 
But I believe there's a quiet peace that can come on you when you understand what was already provided for you. And when you stop going about establishing your own righteousness and submit to his righteousness, as it says in Romans 10 and 3, See, I stopped wrestling for my own righteousness. I stopped trying to establish my own righteousness. I stopped trying to measure my step with a yardstick. I gave up the stick. Amen? And I submitted to what's already been established. There's some things in the scriptures that Jesus did for me that I will never have to try to do. All right, all right. Now, the word sanctified is the word kadosh. It means to make clean. It means to appoint, to consecrate. Any of the things dealing with the tabernacle of Moses, it talks about how it was sanctified. In fact, the first time it showed up was when the Father sanctified the Sabbath day, the seventh day. He, he sanctified that day and he rested from his works. Remember, you ever heard of that? Yes, sir. So that's the first principle. That's a, what they call the first principle when you do it in, in hermeneutics and when you go to school to, you know, to seminary school to tell you the first principle. So whenever the, it is in the first time you see it, it's, it holds the theme all the way through the book. Uh, so when he sanctified the day and he rest, when the Sabbath comes in us in our life, when we get the sanctification, see, y'all missed that, didn't you? No. Yeah, they did. Some of y'all did. <laughs> when the Father sanctified the Sabbath day, it said he rested from his works. When you and I understand the Sabbath day, or understand what it means to be sanctified, yoke 